Hello. In the past, I've usually used one of two styles of smart plug or radio plug for the home control system. I've either used the Lightwave range, which um, has two um, channels. It's either got the premium range and the basic range, or I've occasionally used other Wi-Fi plugs um, to different differing degrees of success. The other day, um, I just happened to be in B&M, which is a chain of stores in the United Kingdom that sell discount products, and I just happened to come across um, a packet of these, which are called status um, plugs, radio plugs. I saw in the manual, well, on the back, that they use 433 MHz, which is, of course, one of the um, radio frequencies that can be detected via the RFX TRX433 transceiver and therefore should be able to be controlled via domotics. So in the packet, uh, which incidentally is being sold in B&M at the moment for £10, you get two plugs and you get the controller. Um, so this is what the controller looks like. There are four um, on-off switches for four plugs to be controlled by this one commander and there's also an all-off and all-on button at the bottom so you can control them all in one go. Obviously useful for putting behind the TV or putting your lamps on etc but for me I wanted to see whether or not this was going to interface properly with Demotics and it actually does um, but there's one or two little foibles with it which I will go through um, in just a second but if we just look at the product itself the plug, it just looks like a standard um, radio frequency plug, however it does have an on-off switch, um, a button to switch it on and off. Uh, being a control freak, um, I'm not sure if I 100% like this because the user, um, somebody else rather than me, can control this and switch the plugs on and off and then um, Demotics itself won't know whether the plug is actually on or off. Um, <clears throat> This is okay for me really because um, if, if somebody is right next to the plug and they want to switch that device on or off, they should be able to. So um, I'm not going to hold it against them by pressing this button. However, um, what you can do is perform a catch up now and then. And that specifically happens for us during night mode and during um, when you leave the flat um, for the day. Because security, the security um, process will involve switching a lot of these plugs off and therefore it will catch up with uh, the status of these plugs at that particular interval. So there's not very much time during the day when Demotics won't know what the status of this device is. Um, another benefit of this particular brand is that the button actually controls the light to tell you whether or not the, the device is on or off. Um, for example, on the Lightwave RF basic range, the LED remains on whether the product is on or off, and also there's no button to, uh, control, the, uh, to control the product itself. So this, um, this would be uh, probably ideal for uh, somewhere that's more accessible so that um, users can actually switch it on or off using this button. Um, and the controller just looks like this, as I've said, it just has a series of four buttons and it's got an all on and all off. So let's look at how we connected it to Demotics and um, see how I control now these plugs from the Demotics system. So I already set up the first plug and it didn't behave exactly as I'd expect it to. Normally when you buy um, plugs and controllers, the on and off buttons for the in each individual plug are controlled as one device so you get on for one device and off for one device and then on for the sec second device and off for the second device however with this particular um, controller each individual button is treated as a separate switch as far as Demotics is concerned so what you have to do is learn the individual switches one by one so I've already taught the first plug which um, I've used for a for a set of speakers. Now I'm going to learn the next plug and what you do is you click on learn light switch and then you click the button on the controller. So I'm going to click learn light switch and I'm going to switch two on. Okay so then I don't know what device this is going to be controlling yet so I'm going to call this status two on. I'm going to set it as a push on button. I'm going to add that device and then I have to because these are treated separately add another device now which is number two off so I'm going to learn light switch press two off 
and then change that to status to off and say it's a push off button um, and add that device <clears throat> so now these two switches have appeared down at the bottom of my screen so I've got two buttons now I've got on and off so you have to individually press these buttons to switch the switch the plug on or off so that may create a problem if you're using a custom user interface like me because you may want Demotix to report whether or not a switch is on or off and if you have two switches for each individual plug you're not going to know whether the switch is on or off if you're using push on and push off buttons for each individual function so there is a workaround for that so to make this process easier to follow I'm going to rename this plug from status 2 and I'm going to imagine that this plug is going to be plugged into a camera which is in the hallway so I'm going to call it hall cam and this will control the power for the camera in the hallway so I've changed that name and I'm going to change the other one to hall cam so I've saved those two now as hall cam on and hall cam off now I'm going to add a dummy switch and to add dummy switches very simple you go to manual light switch because of course you won't have the controller to press anything so I'm going to go to manual I'm going to choose dummy from the drop down now if you can't choose dummy from the drop down you need to go to the setup menu and add a hardware device that's called dummy um, and from that point on you can add in any dummy switches that you want now I'm going to call this whole cam not with on or off because I want it to be an on or off device and I'm going to just give it a random house code that hopefully isn't being used at the moment for any other virtual device so I click add device and then you'll notice down here I've got the two that I've already learnt and then I've got a new one called hall cam now the next part there's two ways of doing this you can either use blocky in order to link up this button with this switch and this button with this switch or you can use Lua and I'm going to go and show you how to use Lua now. So using SCP which is the easiest way for me to get into my Raspberry Pi because I don't have a screen and keyboard and mouse attached to it um, so that so SCP makes it far easier in order to dial into to, um, to the Raspberry Pi and control it so I'm gone into the home Pi Demotics folder I'm going to go into scripts and then Lua and it will bring up a list of all the of all the Lua scripts that I've got already and I'm going to create a new file now um, which I'm going to do with I go up to files and new or I can say new file here and I'm going to call it going to call it script because it needs to begin with script and then device there's two types of script device and time so device script is useful for controlling things that might change on or off and time is useful for running once every minute so this is only going to be running when the device is actually changed so I'm going to call it script device and I'm going to call it hall cam just so I know which one it is and I'm going to click OK so scripts always begin in the same way with demotics in Lua. You start with emptying out the command array. Now the command array sends one, one instruction after the next to whatever device you're controlling. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to empty out the command array by putting in command array equals and then empty. So the first thing I want to do is when I click the, when I switch the uh, hall cam on I want it to actually send the hall cam on signal because don't forget we've got a virtual device which is the switch which I'm going to use for my user interface but I've also got the actual buttons that I've had to learn from the control uh, the controller which have got separate commands that are sent so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if device changed which is hall cam so that's the switch, that's the virtual switch, equals on. And then I'll make it a, I'll put an extra tab in there so we can see what's happening. And then I'll put command array. So this is adding to the command array. And I'm going to put hall cam on because that was the button that I learned. If you remember, I called it hall cam on, equals on. And I'm also going to put some feedback 
what I'm going to say, I'm going to put a print in here, which will come out on in the log in Demotics, which I'll show you in a minute. So I'm going to print Paul Cam switched on. Put whatever, you, obviously, whatever you want in there. So obviously, I need to do the other one now. So I'm going to put else if because I've not put uh, I've not I've not ended the if yet. So I'm going to put an else if in there. Device changed. Whole cam equals off. Notice there's two equal signs in here, so it's very similar to other programming languages. In as much as if you want it to, if you want it to um, to determine whether or not something is equal to something else, you use a double equals. Uh, if you were saying does not equal, then you'd put an exclamation mark and an equals, just like you do in other programming languages. So I'm going to put command array. Call cam off because we want to switch the call cam off button. Now you may think because it's a push off button, it's going to be sending a signal. So you might want to say, "Oh, I'll, I'll send it. I'll send. I'll send an off signal." Well, no. What you need to do is because it's a button, you need to set. You need to switch it on because both of these buttons need to be switched on. So the whole cam on needs to be switched on in order to send the on command, and the whole cam off signal needs to be switched on in order to send the off command. I know it's kind of counterintuitive, but you just have to bear with me with that one. So then you print, I'm gonna put whole cam switched off. Ooh, if I can spell it right. Then I end I put an end because I've finished with my if now, that first if, I've finished with it. And then the last thing I need to do is to tell this bit of script that I'm finished with the script and I want whatever's going to happen, if anything, I want it to return it, I want to return that command array to Demotics. So then all I have to do, click save, it's transferred over into my home Pi Demotics script Lua folder, and I know where to look for it, it's called script device hall cam. I'm going to check that I've actually put, put dot .lua on the end of it because I needed to do that in order to tell it that it is a Lua script. So I will check that in a second. Well, as you can see, no, I didn't add dot .lua onto the end of it. That's my bad. Sorry, guys. So I'm going to have to rename that because otherwise it won't be recognized as a Lua script. So I'm just going to rename that, add Lua in, and there we go. It's a proper script now, and it will run according to Demotics. So let's go over to Demotics and test it out, see if it works. Okay, we're back now at the Demotics interface. So let's see if the script worked. It's only a few lines of script and not the most earth shattering of, um, of scripts, but it's always exciting to see whether it works properly or not. So here's the switch that I'm going to use uh, permanently, the whole cam switch. And don't forget that when I click this on, hopefully what will happen is it will realize that this switch has been switched on and it will automatically send this command, which has been learned from the remote. Therefore, when the command is sent, the plug will switch on. So let's click whole cam on. And yes, the plug indeed did switch on, but let's go up and have a look in the log to make sure that it's working as we expected. Now here you'll see what happened was that this is the bit that we're interested in. So I initiated a switch command, which is the which the whole cam, which is on. The whole cam was switched on, but then the script event was triggered, the one that I've just created, which was called script device hall cam. So then what happens is that the there's two things that happen is that the first thing is that the dummy switch activates whole cam so it's switched on which in other words is what I did I actually switched the, the whole cam on but then thanks to the script the other light um, the other switch has actually switched automatically so whole cam on has switched on in other words the um, the plug for the whole camera has now switched on so let's try it the other way around let's go to switches down here, switch the whole cam off. Yep, it's instant. The whole camera is now uh, the plug for the whole camera has gone off. So to, to double check, let's go back to the log. So this is what's happened. We have had this happen now. So I pre I pressed the whole cam to off. So it's reported that the whole cam switched off. The event was triggered called script device whole cam, which is of course the, the script that we've just put in in Lua. And the whole cam was switched off because I switched it off manually using the switches, but then the script triggered 
all come off to be sent, the command for all come off, and that's what actually triggered the switch to switch off. So in summary, you've got your three switches now. Two of them you don't use because this controls both of those two now. You don't need to switch these individual switches. Um, you just control it using this one and therefore you've got some status on whether the actual device is on or off because I switch it on and now you've got some feedback that that switch is actually on and likewise you switch it off and again you've got some feedback that that switch is off. Um, interestingly with Demotics you probably already know this but that's a light bulb at the moment. If we didn't want it to be a light bulb we can change it to, um, if you go to edit the edit you can choose a different, uh, low, uh, different icon for it so it may be that you want, you'd prefer this on off button. So let's save that. And if we go back to that plug, you'll notice now that it actually looks more like a, a power, power switch and it's off at the moment because it's greyed out. So you press it, switch it on and it goes red. So that might be a more suitable icon to use rather than the um, light switch, depending obviously on what you're controlling. If it was a bedside light, for example, you might want it to, to have, uh, to have a, a bulb logo. So that's how you connect those three switches together in order to make what's quite a dumb switch really when you get it from, um, from a, a cheap retailer into a reasonably more uh, smart switch because then of course you can add this you can add this plug now into all of your Demotics routines you can put timers on it you can put uh, you can connect it to your um, passive infrared sensors, your proximity sensors, even your thermometers, you can connect it up together. Really the world's your oyster now that you've got the, the main setup done. Okay, so now these plugs are up and running, um, that's absolutely great. I'll keep an eye out on them and make sure that they still work for as long as um, the previous plugs that we've, we've purchased have. If so, then it's actually really good value. Um, in comparison, for example, this is the one that we've just Put in this is the status plug this is for comparison the lightwave basic range plug as you can see uh, they are uh, orientated differently so this one sticks up whereas this one sticks down the other difference being that there is no on off switch for the lightwave rf basic range and also the light only stays on it doesn't switch on or off depending on the status of the device the light remains on regardless of the state of the device, whereas this one it switches on or off. So that's one comparison between the two basic plugs. If you're doing a comparison <clears throat> between the Lightwave RF more premium range, you can see there is a bit, there is a lot of difference. This one seems more bulbous, there's a lot more to it because obviously there's, there's probably more, um, there's, the electronics are further spaced out, whether this is far more compact it just looks like a more premium product but then again you do get what you pay for with Lightwave RF um, I'm certainly not going to talk them down their products are amazing and likewise you do you still get a button it's a bit more concealed on the side but you do get a status light the same as this one so um, as a direct competitor to a budget range this one's not doing too bad I have to say um, however time will tell to see whether it lasts as long as the Lightwave RF range so it may be a, a follow-up video coming soon Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Again, if you would like um, this video, I'd really appreciate it. Consider subscribing. As always, more videos are on the way, and I'll see you next time.